Hello and welcome to the podcast that explores the heartlands, entertainment industries. I'm Brian. I'm Kelly. I'm Nick. And today we are going to be talking about union stuff. But before we do that, you know, we just got to check in, see how everybody's... This is the episode that possessed. I have a stroke. <laughs> Brian speaking in tongues. All right, here we go. It is He's a Sunday. possessed. The holy water. This, uh, hap- this happens from time to time, listeners. <laughs> we just have to... It's just another one of those, it. like, demon-possessed podcasts. It's just, one of, it's just one of his quirks. Yeah, yeah. So, um... I don't know. Have you guys ever been to Alaska? This is totally random. No, uh, my it's, it's uncle, so aunt, uncle, cousin live there. My parents have been there. They said it was the most amazing like visit they've ever experienced in the U.S. Yeah. I, guess, I mean, it, yeah. Anyway, I've, I really want to go. And it does. It sounds like an amazing place to visit. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a terrifying place to live. Though. Yes. Yeah. Because like, like like Australia. Well, okay. Yeah. So here's the thing. I did. I, I got on one of those random like internet bend, you know, things where you just like go down the rabbit hole of information. Mm. I was, and like, by the end of it, I was like, "Why is Alaska? Why?" I started the up looking last up. frontier, dude. Yeah. You no, die no, there. Did you know what is the main mode of transport? First of all, what's the main mode of transportation anywhere? Car. Cars. Car. Yeah. You know what the main Not mode there. of transportation is in Alaska? Moose. Plane is it freaking tiny planes. little little hopper planes? Little freaking planes, yeah. Little Cessnas. Follow up question: Do you know what the number one killer of human beings in Alaska is? Grizzly bears, moose, mooses, plane crashes, plane crashes. Oh, that's oh, too listen. obvious. Plane listen, crashes. it's one thing to it's one thing to drink and drive. It's a totally different ball game on epic proportions to drink and fly. Okay, I am in this moment. Making a decision for my future life. <laughs> I'm going to go to Alaska and straight up go out of this world like secondhand lion style <laughs> yeah. in a plane. Right. Fly right into like a barn. Like in a blaze of fire. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's what most people that move to Alaska, there's the, there's the natives that live there, and then there's the people that move to Alaska. To die? And it's always for the, like, <laughs> for the, for the die. People move to Florida to retire. Yeah, people right. move to Alaska uh, to die. Well, well, everyone I've, that uh, moves to Alaska is either like is trying to escape something or is a criminal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just, like here's this is a real thing. Our nation's attorney general visited Alaska for the first time and then declared a state of emergency. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold here. Everyone's like, flying around. He in stepped planes. off the hopper plane and was like, "Oh my god, this yep. is awful." It's day all the time, <laughs> and, and then it's out. night and all the time. <laughs> How can I help? What? It's Monday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know that's why they like pay people to live there, right? Like people get stipends to live there. What? Yes. Yes. This is, it's the most bonkers place because nighttime lasts for like months. Yeah. And then daytime lasts for, for months. For like 14 hours in a day. It's like it's, light outside. That is insane. The they t- do have heated sidewalks though. Let's what? all be think in some places, obviously not everywhere. Yeah, because I'm walking around in my bare feet in Alaska. <laughs> <all over lining. laughs> sidewalks. I'm just saying, for a person who has cold feet. That's true. Hey. That's Kelly true. and I have related yeah. to that. We have the cold feet, cold Listen, hands. Listen, you take your dog walking and his paws stick to the ground <laughs> one time, mm-hmm. and it's just one time too many. And you have I, to leave him there yeah. overnight? <laughs> yeah. No, we should call up my cousin I who lives there. So. Just be like, hey, Joe, what are the five best and worst things about living where you are right now? And I think he'll probably, I don't, he's a very negative person. I love him, <laughs> but he, he'd probably only be like, we're just going to go negative. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he told me that they give like citizens there, like if you're a citizen of Alaska, they give you like a four hundred dollar a year stipend or something, and you can yeah. use that towards college. You can do it, whatever. It's like Please a basically a tax break to you live can, there. You can a, use it for a plane ticket to the to United get States. out or yeah. kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. That's what. Yeah, that's in order to live in Alaska, <laughs> you must be paid to live in Alaska. <laughs> like the the tourism for that is just like come to Alaska. You know, it's it's night for a month and then it's day for a month, and we'll pay you to be here. But we but have we, whales. Yeah, and we have whales. whales, and we got shiny lights in the skies. <laughs> And, and if you're lucky, you might get abducted. <laughs> and if you're just flying around in a plane, don't drink or else you get pulled over by the sky police. Isn't Alaska where that kid from Into the Wild went and died in the wilderness? <laughs> it's no, where I'm the serious. Dude, it's where the dude from Grizzly Man died. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The guy that straight up like got He's like, I'm, got it that by got grizzlies. mauled by I'm, bear. I'm part of the Grizzlies. And then he got ate and he was literally, and he literally part, became part of, part yeah. of the Grizzlies. Was wow. pooped right out. Mm-hmm. Goodness. Huh. Alaska. 
Ryan really wants to go. I, re- here. Want to go I heard the fishing's fantastic. <laughs> if you had to, uh, Alaska or Australia? It, uh, Australia. I have been to Australia. Okay. Uh, went down the coast from Carnes to Sydney. Mm-hmm. That was the most amazing place I have ever been. Been. Are all your babies Never. okay? What about, what about all the dingoes? <laughs> all the dingo <laughs> babies. Baby. No, but like it is it's so dangerous too. It's awesome. Yeah. Australia is yeah. hilariously dangerous. That you have you seen the cassowaries at the zoo? The what? Cassowaries. Let's talk about Australian birds really quickly. <laughs> um, cassowaries are about the size, maybe smaller than an ostrich, uh, but ab- about so em- like twenty emo- feet tall. Emuish <laughs> size. Emuish <laughs> size, right? And they have the most enormous talons. They're they're uh, rare there. They're not like very common. They're going. I don't know if they're endangered, but oh. they their talons are humongous. They look like they're dinosaurs and they're, they will rip open the chest cavities of animals. And, uh, yeah. To like steal their heart? To eat them. (laughs) Some Indiana Jones (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're carnivorous birds. Is this the one that looks like, a, it literally it, it looks, looks like, like a, dinosaur. a dinosaur. It has a fin on its they head. They have two of them at yeah. the zoo now and they're the most amazing things. But I saw them live in the wild in Australia. We were walking on a, a path and this is not common. So I'm like a pretty cool person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like literally like we're walking and there was a mama cassowary and her little babies. And I was like, do not move. My brother, my parents, they were a little bit further away. I was with a, f- a friend of ours. We traveled. This was for my dad's bug conventions. That's why we were there. We traveled because of, he has bug conventions, entomology dad's conventions. A, dad's a bug scientist. He's a bug, which bug is doctor. Amazing. Bug doctor. Bug doctor. Um, and I'm, bug I'm like, doctor. Erica, freeze. Look through the distance. <laughs> And there were these birds. I was like, don't move. Because uh, we both thought that they were going to come and attack us and rip our chests open. It was probably not going to happen, but they're humongous but and terrifying. It's Australia. You can't really rule You it cannot out. trust. I, I mean, and kangaroos are like deer. They cross the they like, wallabies buff, and, they're, and they're super they're aggressive. And they'll, they'll just they come up buff. and poof. Like yeah. kick, I mean, truly, it's crazy. I think that it is safe to say that Australia is the Alaska of the Southern I would. T- I would tell. Mm-hmm. But that's why they sent prisoners there, right? I Yeah. I do would they, totally live there, though. Do they pay it people to live bonkers. there? It is bonkers. No, it's hard to get Did there you now. You can't. They don't want anyone else now. It's hard to get, like, I, I would permanent citizenships that. there now. Yeah. They're like, nah, we're good. We don't want anyone else. No, no worries. Come visit, and then go on. Yeah. We want your tourism, but we don't want you to live here. Yeah. Why don't you pop on we over? We want your people to get in and get out. Guys, do you know how badly I want to go to the Australia Zoo, though, and meet little Robert Irwin. He's not little. He's like 16, but who cares? He's adorable. He's is he, is he, Steve is, he son? is he an exhibit at the zoo? <laughs> he is. Yeah, he's he can gonna, just he's go up and see Robert. Yeah. yeah. Pet the Irwin baby. No, I'm like so obsessed with the Irwin family. So I, want, I really want to meet them anyway. I, you know what? I am equally obsessed with wombat poop. If we're Wombats. talking Australian animals that are bonkers. <laughs> Did you know that wombat poop is cubed? It's wait. What? Mm-hmm. This is a real thing, people. Look what at, does Google that their shit, and I mean literally. Like? <laughs> a wombat's toilet. How does is it like, come out cubed? That is, it's a mystery of God. I love like, this. This is a you fact know I that, did not know. The, that God was creating the world, and first he got done doing the platypus, and he was like, "That was fun." Again, now what Australian else? animal, another I just, Australian I just, creature I just that's fucking on that weird. He's We've like, got okay, cassowaries okay, and platypuses, yeah. and now I'm oh God, I've got, got to feel I, good. I've got so many great ideas. All right, what else? What else? Uh, let's see. We're gonna take this really adorable little creature, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna poop cubes. <laughs> Wombat's toilets look like a game of Tetris. <laughs> It looks like it just yeah, a game if, of if Tetris they, if, you, if Wombat Poop stacks at a particular level, yeah, you gain points. I feel like like if if you know God was designing all uh, designing all the animals and stuff, he went through like, you know, in the 80s, like when cocaine was like big and everything, <laughs> that he went through like a few years of just like, okay, so there's gonna be a mammal, but it's but it but it swims and it's got like a beaver tail. Yeah. And, it lays and, eggs, okay. It lays yeah. eggs, but and, they're but they're alive. And then there's a dinosaur that will just like rip, rip your chest open. <laughs> but it's a bird. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a 19 19- 80s writer's room. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you feel like every single one was just like, okay. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I'm going to segue into today's topic, but we're going to do it. This yeah, is, nat- this is totally unrelated. Natural. Although let's talk about if you were on a set in Australia, you would want to be a part of a union mm-hmm. so you're not in danger yes. at all times. So Boom. you would have, have segue achieved. There you people. go. Segue achieved. You're welcome. Yeah, she wins. <laughs> so if you're in some crazy place that is incredibly dangerous like and Alaska or, and you, or like, uh, like one of those two and you're eyeballing a wild animal that may or may not eat you with its talons or one that poops cubes or <laughs> poops cubes and you're just like oh, this is making me panic for some reason I'm just confused 
Uh, so that's what the union is for, is to keep <laughs> you safe from all the wombats and all the Alaskans. Mm-hmm. So let's go to our conversation with Colin Ward from the local 484 union. <laughs> all right, we're here with Mr. Colin Ward, our local 484 representative and also Star Trek extraordinaire. Ooh. I should... I, I, I didn't know even, that. Yeah. yeah. If you guys want to talk about Star Trek, I'll go on for it. <laughs> That's for another podcast. That's my right. <laughs> we might touch on Star Trek in a bit, but today we're talking about, uh, y- we're talking union <laughs> shit. Okay. Union <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'll tell you. So, yeah. No, ask, yeah, you start and then I'll yeah. see what, yeah. <laughs> It's see never, it's never just that. union stuff. It's always union <laughs> shit. <laughs> so Colin, what is your capacity uh, with local 484? Um, I'm the Oklahoma State Regional Representative, which basically was a title that I more or less developed. So you named own. yourself Regional Manager? Re, uh, yeah, the re- Regional Representative, because it just it wasn't. It, it was kind of an existing uh, officer title, but it also kind of wasn't since the um, since the union absorbed Oklahoma what four years ago or thereabouts. Yeah. Did you go to any of the earliest meetings? Man, the I I went to my initiation meeting, uh, which was three four years ago, yeah. mm-hmm. and then I just, I haven't been able to make it to any other meetings because I'm working. That's you know every time anybody goes to a meeting and says, hey, where is somebody or why you know can we get more people here? No, they're working and they're like, that's exactly <laughs> everyone's yeah. like, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you're working have. union or not, <laughs> yeah, they want to you you want to be working. Um, yeah. So the, the title more or less existed. Uh, Shelly Dapolito was in the position before I was. I don't remember whether or not there was a, a vote or an appointment to that position. I'm sure it was a vote, though. Um, and then you didn't run a campaign or anything. You can. You can totally do that. It was just it, in, in my instance, and I have to figure, I, I don't even know how much I'm allowed to really say to any, anybody about this, but uh, <laughs> uh, this is all going to be bleeped. Great yeah. secret. <laughs> it's, it's all right. I'm, I'm sweating. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the real answer was that, uh, you know, the position was coming up for availability and um, uh, her husband, Jeremy, just dropped the papers and said, he, Colin's organized. <laughs> he should probably do this. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I took off with it and I started trying to make it my own thing. Um, so since then, you know, it's, I've realized that you absolutely need to make it to the local meetings. And then uh, right now we have two meetings in Oklahoma a year. Uh, we just had one in Tulsa that was pretty successful because we were, we're on a membership drive right now. And um, before that, we had one in February in Oklahoma City. Are these open for just union members or, I mean, are, are outside of the union as well? People can well, you, come you, in yeah. or no? I mean, Do yeah. If you, if you want to join the union, you can go to those meetings okay. for sure. Okay. I mean, they're, they're for union personnel. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing that's easier to differentiate, you know, membership versus non-membership and how you get into the union or why mm-hmm. you'd be interested in doing it and uh, what, it, what, it, what the benefits are ultimately. Yeah. yeah, which I think that's probably some of what we'll be asking. We're, yeah, we're going to be talking about all, <laughs> all that. All of because these things like, I want to know. Well, and it's interesting, you know, like before we start these, you know, interviews and stuff, I always write down questions. <laughs> and like with this one, I have no lack of questions. because like, <laughs> Even as a member of the union, like there's still a lot that I don't know. So we're going we're gonna to start out kind of at the baseline for the listeners that really have no reference as to what we're talking about. A.K.A. me. <laughs> <laughs> so just right out the gate, what, what exactly is Local 484? Um, it's a uh, regional jurisdiction of the International Alliance of Theater and Stage Employees. So that's IATSE. And um, so there's an international of IATSE, and then there's all of the different states or regions, and they all fall under different numeric titles as well. So, um, yeah, well, about four years ago, and it's 2019, uh, yeah, the uh, I, I, IA484 absorbed Oklahoma. They were up, they're run out of an office in Austin, Texas. And so it was kind of the Texas Union. They also turn out to have a very slim part of Arkansas, and I don't really know what the uh, uh, 
line of demarcation is there. We just want a piece of Arkansas. Yeah, not the yeah. We don't want the whole thing. No. Just the tip. Just the, it was just inter- the pretty part. <laughs> just the tip. Just There's the a tip. That, <laughs> that, that famous Blunt Arkansas geology tip. Geography. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Th- so I, I know that they did a. I'm thinking it was a se- like three season three of. Um, True Detective, they did parts of that there. Yeah, so that was something that we covered. We have but a connection to season three of True Detective. Right? Somewhere in oh, here. Yeah. Did you do some work? I was I was both in it and on the second unit. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't going to jam you in front of the camera <laughs> every time the opportunity comes they, up? You know, they were like, get that boom guy. Put, make him put his pole down and get in front of the camera. That boom guy looks curious. He's, he'll ask yeah. a question. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of My like legendary that. role is reporter number two. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, he knows he he looks he looks uh, comfortable you with the equipment. Yes. I look so official. You don't look like a number one, but you're better than a number I'm, four. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just straight up number two. <laughs> so yeah, that, so they shot True Detective in Fayetteville, uh-huh, mm-hmm. and uh, like it was interesting being there because like I asked them like, are, is there a union here? And they're like, <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> they, they, I don't think that they knew. Yeah, mm. and um, well, I, a lot of this, a, a lot of union stuff seems very vague to a lot of people. Especially is is in the that Midwest. because it's newer here than other? I mean, it seems. Think, yeah, mm-hmm. it seems like co- people obviously on the on the coasts are pretty familiar with. It's a that. way of life yeah. in a very established region and set of markets mm-hmm. in those areas, and it's and it branched out into multiple industries there. Um, especially, especially on the East Coast, you you always hear about Teamsters and steelworkers mm, yes. and um, I guess coal and energy industry and stuff like that out that way. But this, everybody hears that you know, oh, Oklahoma is a right to work state, and it's, yeah, it might be. But the mere fact of the matter is that there is a union for uh, film and theatrical employees, and just because it's a right to work state, it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to get away with everything or anything Mm -hmm. or whatever you think. I mean, I was taking questions from a a unit production manager on the phone the other day for one of the shows coming up. And honestly, I'm not the person they need to be talking to. They need to be talking to our business manager in Austin about those things. And it's like, why are, why are you asking me whether or not I'm union? That's, <laughs> that's actually illegal. I mean, you, is it case, really? In case Ooh. somebody is phoning you up and you're a union member, you don't have to answer that question. You know, if somebody is phoning you up and saying, are you union? You can Ooh. say yes or no, or you can, I automatically should raise a red flag because chances are it's some PA in Burbank, just checking to see people's availability, and they don't know they're not supposed to do that. Ah, mm. That's very interesting. That's a good I didn't know tip that. for people here. I would have no yeah. idea. Because I actually, because I'll have people ask me that all the time. Or, Are you union? Yeah. And I'll tell them, honestly, yeah, yeah, I am. There's no reason, I think, not to answer that, a, a, especially when you as an individual can ascertain whether or not somebody is going to do something damaging with that information mm. right you know if you're working with somebody in in crew and they're they're trying to figure out whether or not they want to be union or whatever and they've got some long-standing family concern about it or they come from an anti-union family mm. and they're they're still there but they're in this industry and they're like man i'm tired of the exploitation or i'm tired of you know the over over utilization or something like that or yeah i'm tired of doing two people's jobs. Mm. These things right. happen constantly. We're trying to root those things out and make that just not be a thing any longer. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, if somebody's somebody on crew is asking you that, there's no reason not to answer that. You, everybody can just an- figure out for themselves whether or not it's worth saying something. Mm-hmm. Right. But and, you, should, uh, you should ask if that crew member is wearing a wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, hey, just to me in the end, I'd, I'd wonder, you know, well, what department is this person yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what yeah. is the difference between actually, let me take a step back. What are all the different departments that local 484 covers? Because local 600 is a camera operator. That's right. And so that's not part of local 484. Right. They would not have, uh, it, it's kind of impressive what they, what, that what we do cover and what we don't, because there's a, there were obviously not teamsters. So that's the transportation department. Um, I don't know like what you're, listening radius is aware of as far as filmmaking but um 
Yeah, you have a, you have camera, you have SAG and AFTRA for the performers, the in front of the camera folks, and then you have uh, IATSE doing things for like st- for basically the entire crafts. Uh, it kind of stops at locations. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some reason, locations is not something that there is a union for, and there's questions going back and forth really? as to whether or not Teamsters are going to absorb them. Uh, the Producers Guild, the Directors Guild, the Writers Guild, anything that falls under those purviews, definitely not. Assistant Directors, ADs as we call them, are not in IA because they go into DGA, Directors Guild. And um, strangely enough, I mean, then there's the Art Directors Guild as well. I'm interested oh. in getting involved with that yeah. as, as a person who does art department, but uh, because I've got production designer credits. And so I'm just broaching that, trying to see what it is that I need to be able to involve myself there. But for some reason on the roster for 484, production designer is listed. So I sent all my material in there and added that as a craft. (laughs) And, um, you know, I have yet to have anybody call me up and say, hey, I see that you're listed as such. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we'll see where that goes. And it is is interesting because local 484 seems to represent like a a big hodgepodge of of departments. So right. Like, you've got makeup, hair, wardrobe. You've got grips and electrics. Um, you've got all of the different art department personalities, um, set dressers, props persons, prop masters. It goes on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, Are PAs variations. covered in that? No. PAs in essentially would end up going into... Uh, probably the DGA. It's kind of strange because when you see them blocked out on a call sheet, and like I say, for anybody that don't know what that is, that's the uh, that's kind of where all the answers are. What are you filming today? Blah blah blah. Who's going to be there? What their position is? How to get a hold of them and things like that. And it's delineated in chunks of what by what department you happen to be in. It also tells you what time, and then of course it says what time you need to be there. And so when you see PAs, those are production production assistants. People always say, oh, well, it's the gophers. I'm like, well, then you don't work in the industry because, yeah, maybe that is what they do, but they do a ton more. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, uh, so, but they're blocked in with production, basically, and that's their mm. department. But um, in the end, I would think that that would gear them towards DGA, ultimately, right. because you can get a DGA trainee that, if I recall, and I've only ever got to work with one or two actual DGA trainees, they're doing a solid year's worth of work no holiday like no time off just every day trying to get 300 days or whatever it is and i don't know what the actual number is of non-union work to get in and take those tests and become a member of the dga right they aren't going into pga at that moment right so yeah next (laughs) (laughs) check well and i'm surprised (laughs) the pas don't actually move into pga because like that seems like a production assistant in my mind is like a track towards producing more so than directing. I get, well, I guess that makes sense that it's under first AD and all that. Right. Kind of they stuff, work so. for di- they work directly directors for and all that. the first AD, uh, the second AD, the second, second AD, et cetera. And, um, yeah, I mean, they're just, they fall in that world, but I, yeah, by, by way of name, it totally makes sense. And by the way, if I'm throwing out a wrong answer here, <laughs> No one will people, know be because sure. you Bring guys the don't know prod. anything. There are people that know. I <laughs> want to know. If I'm saying something wrong, I want to know it. Be <laughs> sure to write in right. to yeah, Colin right. Ward, mm-hmm. Karaoke Show Show, <laughs> with, his, with yeah. any uh, death threats or anything. Yeah. You know, just yep. send those, go, send go those our way. Send those to me and I'll read them next time. Yeah. <laughs> so what are what are the benefits of joining the union? Be- actually, let me ask this question first, because we are a right to work state in Oklahoma. But what exactly does that mean? Right to oh, work. Man. Uh, that, that all exists. <laughs> Free for all. Yeah. I mean, that's what a lot of people think it is, though. Well, I don't, uh, yeah. I I'm mean, not entirely sure I know how to answer that. It, it opens the workforce to the possibility of mass exploitation. But, you know, what are you going to do? How many? It, I'm trying to figure out how best to align the direction of this conversation when i think about people who don't have film jobs they're going and they're working wherever they're working they're you know the public library or mcdonald's or walmart or something or they have a career that they're developing and for instance i was just visiting with an old friend of mine who's an architect and she's getting killed out there you know she's working for an um 
untenable hourly rate with no benefits and no package and stuff like that. And then I hear about another friend of mine and his wife, I think, is on a track to become a partner. And that will put her over exactly with all of those things, the things that are going to take care of her for the rest of her life. It's, you know, putting in the years into a job like that. But that's a career job. You don't just leave high school and go become an, go be an architect. You have to go mm-hmm. to school for that. And filmmaking, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can go take a couple of classes and show some moxie and some savviness and find yourself in a meritocracy mm. of being able to perform and develop a career out of that um, without a ton of technical experience. But you should be seeking certifications. That becomes one of the things that the IA is able to do for you because there are certifications galore. I've taken lift classes for forklifts, man lifts, petty bones operation, uh, things like that. You know, you go out of town and it's, it's paid for because the IA paid for you to be certified like that. We're trying to get CPR classes handled. Oh, that's just, great. There's, mm-hmm. there's also basic uniformity of safety. Did you take the uh, safety classes yet? I don't think, no, I haven't. Yeah, you should do it. I, sh- I yeah. should. Uh, one of the- uh, I really should. Yeah. What our, our, um, I, like I say, I've got to figure out where I've got to draw the line on what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what, you know- What that, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have hot enough lamps in here. <laughs> uh, the, uh, there's a there's this concept that one of our our officers talks about and he's like the safety wave is not coming the safety tsunami is here we want to see a uniform standard of safety mm-hmm. qualifications it's not just enough that everybody comes to work and knows how to deal with a cut finger but everybody comes to work and knows i'm not the person that's supposed to deal with that 220 voltage you know, right. mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, why would you anyways? It just it called, you know, get somebody who's supposed to do that. Yeah. And, and, and uh, from there, I think we were talking about this last time on the podcast as well. From there, that is what's going to create a really smooth working set. Yeah. Everyone okay. knows what their job is and what their job is not. Mm-hmm. And, and having that knowledge can make it much more smooth when you're, you know, that's the yeah. goal is to have just a smooth thing yeah. that is it doing what it should do well that's and it. i think the problem that we see a lot is that you is the concept of you don't know what you don't know right mm-hmm. right and ignorance is not bliss more often than not knowing you know like i told if, if i'm in a position of authority and i'm telling this guy to do something i expect them to take care of it i don't care if two or three other people help as long as it's just because it's the delegation of responsibility to mm-hmm. get it all done but like, when it comes to safety you know, you don't need somebody that has talent to be paying attention to, to be up on a ladder, fiddling with a sign or stringing up cable. It's just, that's really obvious stuff. But like yeah. I say, the safety thing. So you know, going in a really roundabout way, this is just one part of the tangent here. What is it that it's there for? You, like I say, uniform standard of safety, understanding things like that. There's a uh, anti-sexual harassment platform and it's a training f- for awesome. anti-sexual harassment mm-hmm. not right. pro and, um, <laughs> yeah. you can learn how to harass it's a today. Very, it's a very different class <laughs> yeah. yeah uh so there's that then there's health and belt health and health and welfare and benefits mm-hmm. i mean you put it you've got money getting put away into an annuity that's going to accrue over the course of your career and the more work you do the more money you're putting into it and that's really difficult in this market because how many like how many union quality jobs do we get here per year? How many days worth of percentage are you putting away into those things? I see how that's a difficult thing for people. And I think about, yeah, you know, people are working in Atlanta and people are doing major commercial work in LA. People are doing features TV in Atlanta. People are doing commercials, movies and television in New York or mid Atlantic or something like that. There's all of these different markets where things are really just crushing right now. And, you know, I mean, you run into somebody who went to a place like that and they're just, yeah, I'm visiting and I'm doing great. And I've got all this stuff that makes me feel safe and and sound. Yeah. The point at this, you know, looking at all of that stuff, I was like, there's no reason why we can't have that stuff here so that we don't have to leave our home or we don't have to find a, we don't have to disrupt our, our, our lives any more than we already 
are. Right. Yeah, and it's, it's mostly about, sorry, it's mostly about communication too, just like making sure everyone is aware of everything on set and, you know, just like if you, hey, I'm uncomfortable doing this, just speak up. Don't be, don't feel pressured into doing it. Like, yeah, speak up and make sure that it gets done for the betterment of the production and everything. That's Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I want to talk more about safety um, in just a little bit, but... Real quick, I want to touch on um, danger. What, uh, on, on danger, <laughs> <laughs> what is the process of joining Local Four Eight Four? Oh, that's not. It's not. I mean, if you've worked on, you can be a non-union uh, crew person that has found themselves working on a show that flipped, or sometimes. What does that mean when the show that's flips? A, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good point. Um, you work on a show that's non. It's it's characterized as non-union so the rates the benefits these things might not exist you've negotiated your own day rate or your own hourly rate or something like that for however many days that were available to you um and seriously let me know if this stuff is too much lingo no this is no, 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 this no, is no. great yeah. but uh yeah i mean <laughs> actually that's uh, that's up to kelly yeah <laughs> no i'm following i'm tracking guys i got it right now you can, <laughs> we're gonna have a okay. quiz for yeah. kelly in yeah. a little bit okay, just to make right. sure yeah. Yeah. later uh yeah i mean you you me being in the art department i'm probably going to get more days than somebody else i mean okay i've got prep days that i need to develop the project i've got a days on the show where i have to work in production and then i have to wrap up the show for some days you have to have an exit strategy what do you do with all of this accumulated gear and then you have other positions that are grips or something like that they maybe have a day where they come get gear they load it into a truck so they know they've got everything and they're there for production and then it's all over so they're going to get less days you, you look at all of those call sheets I mentioned, your name is on those call sheets, the date is there, and you see that it is like a legitimate production entity, an LLC or some major studio company that's filming here from out of state or something like that. And that is what anybody looks at in addition to uh, pay stubs and um, um, tax records that indicate that you worked all of those days so you can have you have ninety non union days in a craft, so in the a, same craft, right? In, um, not necessarily. I, I feel like there's a little bit more. I, I'm not. You know what? I don't know if I can answer that right now because I've seen it go both ways, mm. and I think that it's. I really don't want to talk out of turn, but I feel like the opportunities right now are we want more union membership because there are bigger better shows coming and some of our uh elected representatives have done a lot of good for us lately by helping us uh, increase the film incentive and so we want to have what one producer friend of mine says is the one-stop shop where they you know hey we've got everything you need right now we've got the we got the we've got the gear we've got the personnel We've got the incentive, we have the locations, you know, we can attract whatever we need to do this. Right. So let me see if I'm getting back to the point. Uh, <laughs> if, if people are, <laughs> yeah, I need a, I need a drawing. <laughs> if, if people, <laughs> just give me a whiteboard. <laughs> if people are, uh, are maybe not, you know, 30 days union in, uh, you know, underwater kerm furling, then maybe they're kerm furling and flabbergasting and, um, sharking something <laughs> like that and it adds up and it's like okay no you've got the necessary 90 days right and so that's what it is they always say simply enough it's 30 days of union work gets you in on that craft or uh 90 days non-union right and i i my my situation initially was i'd done a lot of commercial work in a variety of different titles because Nobody was calling me and just being like, hey, you're going to do props on this one or you're going to be the art director or whatever. And I'm going, well, OK, this commercial was union. This one was not. And then this movie was union and this one was not or whatever. When I when I signed in, when I sent in my packet, you know, I've seen people that just send here's a stack of papers or here's a really nice uh, folio with everything printed out. I sent in this giant box because I was I'm like, OK, hey, I want to come in as a props master. And the question well, well, maybe you've only got the. Th 30 days and i'm like well yes Hold on that's now. Only, it's 30 days it's like well maybe you need to be characterized as such and it's like here's everything i've ever done let me know <laughs> if that's a problem yeah and they're like no you can do whatever you want to this makes sense <laughs> and since then i've added multiple more crafts and that i think 
outside of union stuff is a odd question because people will ask you people from other very, uh, Oh, I don't know what to say exactly. Other markets basically that are really serious that that's what they do there is it's all filmmaking. And that's all, if you're a filmmaker, that's all you're doing. They'll come in and they're like, why are you this? Why does your resume have this all over the place? You're this, you're that, you're mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, you know, you cater your resume to the job that mm -hmm. you're being right. offered. And, um, but then if they look at the roster and because if a legit show is going to come in and they say, Hey, we want to, we want to talk to all of the union members. They need to immediately ask for the roster from the business agent yeah. at the, you know, at the IA and then they say, okay, well, okay, well, I see that you've got these guys. I see you've got all of these electricians or whatever. Right. And, um, but they're, you know, they're not looking around going like, oh, hey, well, this guy is an electrician and he's also been something over here and something over there. This guy's a man of many talents. <laughs> exactly. We can <laughs> hire him for five different jobs. He's no. a renaissance man. <laughs> Only the pay of that's one. That's part of what we're learning is, no, you cannot do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Don't, don't Which is do a benefit it. Do it. to joining no. a union. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you should be able to come to work and know that know what you're going to do and that you're not gonna get overutilized. Yeah. But uh, multiple shows this year have tried to do that to people. Yeah. Would yeah. that be the dream? Well, <laughs> well, and I think um, uh, I, I let's talk about some of the the tiers that are out there because, like, I, explain what exactly like a tier three through a tier zero would be. I I would love to. Okay, yeah, that's that's a thing that's come up recently, and the, the figures are beyond me. Um, and for the audience, when we're talking about tiers, we're talking about the the overall budget. Is somebody who's got a phone on them, like. Pull it up. See if you can find the actual numbers. We had what we were, I guess, being advertised as a bunch of tier zero shows this year. <laughs> yeah. And so it was like, hey, cool. Um, let's just get all of these shows all happening at the same time. And there won't be enough crew base to fill all of the positions on it. And then we'll take all of these students. I love students. I love teaching. But still at the same time, that just leads itself to or lends itself to the you know, everybody's exhausting themselves, training people on the job. And then there's this mentality that, uh, oh, well, look at all these people. We just got them in the door and whatever. Look at all these great new people we have mm. here. And I'm like, okay, that's one thing, but we'll, we have, we still, they, you know, it's a diamond in the rough. You have to develop that over right. the course. You have of, to hone your craft and all exactly. that. Exactly. So I, um, I'm reading on. Yeah. The, okay. So we have tier zero shows. <laughs> tier zero. It's according not a real to thing. Reddit. Mm. Now keep this with a grain yeah. of salt. I'm and this on is Reddit written, too. Yeah. Written mm -hmm. by Noodle Pants. Yeah, Noodle Pants. Noodle yeah. Pants. Tier zero My is also pants. known as ultra low budget, which per the 2014 through 2016 IATSE contract means the budget is no higher than. Two, two million, two million. Thirty five thousand. Yes. yes. Yeah. Which is so that seems high for ultra low budget. Right. I mean, if it's a dollar more, then it changes every dollar amount that all of the SAG personnel are making, and that can blow out your budget. When you're <laughs> producing and you're coming into a place and you're saying, We're gonna try to do this and hold it under this under this budgetary level. Well, I mean, all of us who are sitting here is like, okay, well, this is the job that's come to us. I look at it and I go, so you guarantee it's, it's like what David Cross said in one of his uh, performances <laughs> several years ago. He's like, oh, no, they're paying me minimum wage. <laughs> they would like to be paying me more, but they literally cannot, they cannot. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. so your, your rates are completely negotiable. You don't know what you're going to make until you've had that conversation and then you run into problems where you've got, OK, a, a, a department head or a key. Those are people who are, you know, like if you're. It's, uh, I don't know if you're a sh you're you're in charge of a department uh, when you're a key or a department head, obviously, and um, you know, hey, they're going to make this much. So then the next person in the pecking order is going to make this much, and then da, 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 and suddenly it's like you got people who are working for less than minimum wage. Yeah, and, and indentured servitude is not legal. Yeah, how not do you, cool I either. Don't, I mean, honestly, I can't understand. We do have so many people who are attaching themselves to those projects because. Oh my God, I haven't worked in four months, you know, and I, that's terrifying. You have to work and it's, it, I mean, yeah, I've been in bad situations where I've sat around, I, I've, I've not worked instead because I knew I was in my world circumstances going to spend more money going to work yeah. than not working on something mm -hmm. because at least if I was at home, I could curtail my costs. Right. Your overhead wouldn't go up. 
Yeah, I mean, as yeah. As opposed to all the travel costs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, so. the best thing that you can get, I think, is to be making an appropriate amount of money and be so busy at work that you don't have time to spend it. Right. So that when you, you know, so Christmas is awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, we've run into that a, a lot this year where uh, th- we call, you know, you have like somebody who's a third or I don't know, like a, a, a grip third or a gaffer third or something like, or not a gaffer, an electrician third or something like that. And it's suddenly like, oh, you're making $12 an hour or something. And then you just have to figure out like, how much do I want to bang my head against the wall for this rate? Yeah. You know, uh, because on a smaller show, they're cutting the corners everywhere they can. And they still want a show that has the mass market feel of, John Wick or I don't know what something yeah. something with a lot of studio backing they want a two million dollar movie for fifty thousand dollars or mm-hmm. something like that oh they want a five million dollar movie for two million thirty five yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so after the after that I mean that's that's the beginning to you know that that's the beginning of it where it's like okay then you're in tier one and the rates automatically have to roll over to whatever and there's a huge list of here are the different departments and this is what they would make based on, I believe it's a Massachusetts contract or something like that. And uh, yeah, this is one of those things that it's up to everybody to look up. I mean, I I can't, I don't know. And I can't sit here and tell everybody every possible rate based on every tier, but there should be a killer Excel spreadsheet out there. I don't have it, but it behooves anyone union or not to look up and see what they should expect to be making in different tiered levels of performance and then look at that and go, okay, do I want to work on this non-union mm. project? Yeah. Well, yeah. And a lot of times you do, cause you know, we've done shows in Oklahoma where it's a non-union project, but the rates were okay. And you're not being overutilized. You're, you're getting, you're getting your meal times at an appropriate interval. Yeah. You're, you're not, you're getting your turnaround. Turnaround is, you know, the expected amount of time that, you're required to get from the time you leave work at the end of one day and have to report in the next day. And then sometimes that doesn't work out for every department and you start looking at it and go, okay, well, it makes unfortunate sense that these guys have to get a little bit burned and have to operate a little bit hot. It just shouldn't be like that. Yeah. You know, we all do a little bit more than we really want to sometimes. And so that this, the, with the Oklahoma market being a little, more new and, and smaller than, you know, like obviously like Atlanta or things like that, is that, that that's kind of the problem is there are non-union things coming in, people are working on those things, then they're getting burnt out and not treating, treated well, um, but they're afraid to get into the union because then they won't have jobs. So it's kind of like a, like, is that, is that is my understanding? Of it? Kind of like a, yeah, they're, they're worried that they won't have as many jobs union-wise if they did get there, so they stay non-union, is that? I don't, I don't think that's exactly it. I okay. think that, I mean, you're touching on some things, but it's it, it, like, it, it'd be better for us to like take that question statement mm-hmm. point by point mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. try to illustrate each as it happens. I think what happens is that people go, okay, well, they're not that organized there. Let's go film there. There's an incentive. Mm. Yeah. We, we, you know, the incentive is massively beneficial to us. It's, you know, that it attracts work to this state. And then the costs are low and the locations are fantastic. And we have a film commission that's very interested in, uh, in getting all kinds of projects here, whether they're good for the local crew base or not. So there's what they're telling productions from out of state. And then there's, they get here and they start asking around and they're like, Hey, yeah, we're going to go with this. And it's what people are, it's what the crew base is willing to accept Mm. to do the work. Okay. So it's like what you said a minute ago. You don't know what you don't know. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes we, I approach a job and I'm going, I don't even know what the questions are. You're asking, you want answers (laughs) and I don't even know what the Mm. questions are yet. So then I have to start guessing around. It's just pure chaos. So a show coming in and it's like, okay, what can we, at a certain point, I'm, I'm, I really think that. It, by word, they're like, well, what can we get away with here? Mm-hmm. And, okay. And, and whereas yeah. if you're, if it's a union job, it's, that's uh, eliminated. It's all, it, it should be. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And yet the opportunity for exploiting people is still there because mm-hmm. 
I don't, I mean, I don't think that our film industry in Oklahoma is new. I've been doing, I've been working films since I think 2004 or 2005. I, I don't qualify that as new. That's a massive percentage of my life. And, um, and yeah, I went away. I worked in LA for four years. I came back. I've done jobs in Texas. I've done jobs in West Virginia. Um, I did a movie in New York. I mean, I feel like I've been to some places and I like that because when you are, when you the opportunity presents itself for you to go work in another market, you're going to come back with a new perspective. That's not how they're doing it there. Like mm-hmm. they're protected because of this. And we need to, we need people here to know that. Right. You know, when, when these jobs come in and we have people who are, uh, all working in the, in the same very finite field and they aren't communicating with one another, you know, hey, uh, I was offered this rate, what about you? Well, is there's a concern because unions are there to help you in the concept of collective, collective bargaining. Right. You know, we need to know if, if a union job comes in and they're like, okay, hey, this is what we're offering, it's a tier three job boom, you pretty much know what you're supposed to be making. And you yeah. know whether, well, if I live this far away, I should be getting accommodations. Okay. And, uh, you know, these people are going to get portal to portal. Like they're going to, they're getting paid from the time they leave their play, their house to the time they get back or whatever. It just depends on what position you've accrued to uh, in your department and, and what kind of a deal that you've been able to make. But at the same time, the deals are there already they exist they're in place for you to protect you at that point mm. and uh i mean like i've i've had the conversation with one of our local unit production managers i'm i'm in, i know hey i'm i'm burning here i've got to figure out what to do next can i get some help in this way okay let's push him sh- and shove some things we'll see what we can do for you and be, okay good that's because we have an established working relationship you know you may or may not get that from somebody that comes in from out of state but then if you've got a union job, you know, okay, so what do you think? Hey, it's easy to work. It's easy to do a union show. The answers are all there and mm. they, you're, you know, the UPM doesn't have to figure out something with every individual on the project or doesn't have to get into a situation where the department head is trying to negotiate for everybody because at the end of the day, everybody has to advocate for themselves mm. yeah. in those instances. Mm. So does okay. that, I yes, think, I think, I that, no, I think that clarifies, like I yeah, that clarifies. yes, yes. Yeah. Thank mm-hmm. you. Cause that's why I was, uh, yeah. Well, in a second, I want to, I want to hear some horror stories. This will be the fun part. <laughs> yeah. podcast. This is what yeah. we'll base our improv off. Yeah, later. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a game. So, out of yeah. It. So we're going to hear some horror stories in just a bit, right after these messages. <laughs> Do you need some great graphics design work for your website, business, or film shoot? Well, Zachary Burns is the guy to call for all your graphics design needs. If you need an awesome movie poster, maybe some cool props with logos or general graphics-ness, well, who are you going to call? You're going to call Zach Burns. Zach is also one of Oklahoma's top on-set photographers. Say you're shooting your project, you need to be able to promote that project, and on-set photography is one of the best ways to do that. You put together your electronic press kit, or EPK for you acronym lovers out there, and you fill your movie's website with awesome behind-the-scenes photos. Go check out Zach's website at lefteyeburns.com. That's lefteyeburns.com. And hit him up in the About section. And we're back with Colin Ward from Local 484. <laughs> great break. Hey, what's up? <laughs> all, those, all those ads were great. I loved each and every one of them. Every one of those products. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Colin, I'm sure that you've accumulated many horror stories over the years because you've been doing this since like t- 2004. Mm-hmm. So, what are some good examples of uh, production scenarios where the union would definitely step in? Um, I think that we at least have the benefit of some savvy personnel that would step in before the union would get involved when it comes to lightning strikes. I mean, if yes. you we you know you you always hear about these productions that are uh, you know you're filming indoors, you're filming outdoors, whatever. You've got to have generators, and those things are a magnets a magnet for lightning. So if there's yeah. if the, you you've always got the gaffer, you've got the key grip, you've got ads. We're all boom operator t- holding a yeah, lightning yeah, yeah, rod. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's been paying me. attention to whether or not the weather is getting close enough. And that wasn't even a pun. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you've got lightning strikes around, somebody's just going to shut things down. Yeah. It's, hey, it's too close. What you is know. too close for lightning strikes? 
I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know. I, you know, uh, being, being an art department person, yeah. chances are I'm either going to be on set running around <laughs> with, uh, I, like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to just keep up with what needs to be happening for props. Or if I'm the production designer, I'm probably not even on set. I, yeah. I might be prepping things for the rest of the show. Uh, if like I say, an AD, a gaffer, uh, the key, to, the key grip, they're, they're definitely people who are going to know. There are going to be a lot of people who know a lot of things. If you get into a situation where you're dealing with the weather, you can probably ask anybody and they're either going to know or they don't, but you can go to those people and say, Hey, there's weather over there. I just saw a lightning strike and they're going to probably pull up an app yeah. that says, mm -hmm how many lightning strikes per minute and how far mm. away it was. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go, Oh yeah, we need to shut this down. Yeah. But I guarantee they're looking and then production is going to be ahead of that because they're watching the weather all day, every day, anyhow. Mm -hmm. It's we on the call sheet. Yeah. We were filming in a giant metal warehouse, uh, two years ago and there was a thunderstorm and they're like, yeah, well, I mean, we can still keep filming, but we won't be able to do it with lights or we can't, yeah. we can't be plugged into anything. And then at the same time, you're going, why are we filming in a giant metal building? <laughs> wrist takers. Yeah, I'm sure the yeah. sound guy's slitting his wrist. Yeah. <laughs> the sound of hail, et yeah. cetera. I mean, that's that's automatically one of those things. Because you're going to have guys up in... Uh, up on uh, what do we, we call it? what are they fly swatters? You've got you got guys who are up manhandling oh, condors and all rig that in a condor yeah. and stuff like that. You don't want them getting zapped or anything else. Flying uh, a kite with a key on it, <laughs> <laughs> trying to discover electricity. <laughs> yeah, that's something they do on the. That's that's definitely a, a, a an East Coast thing. For yeah, all those Benjamin Franklin. I know. <laughs> the rule of thumb, like uh, as a sound guy, I actually know the, the answer to the question. Good. So, for me, the rule of thumb has always been. 10 miles out uh, is big time warning. Mm -hmm. 10 miles out is too close already. 10 miles out, you Five start to pout. 5 miles pout. out. Yeah, 10 <laughs> miles out, you start to pout. That's a good, that's yeah. good. Yeah. 5 <laughs> miles out, you stand down. Like, yeah, at, cool. at 5 miles out, I'll, I'll compress my boom down. And, like, I will, like, if they're not going to shut production down, like, I'll still roll, but we're not getting boom. Mm -hmm. I'm not holding mm -hmm. a pole mm -hmm. gotcha. with lightning strikes within visual range. Yeah. And I had that happen. I uh, oh, it's a Brian short horror story now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, dude, I've got a lot. I probably have too many. I probably should have like called the union and been like, "Hey, so this happened," <laughs> oh, but, no. and just been but on the I line. Also, no but reason not this to. is a legitimate question because I also don't know how to like if you're in a production that you say, "Hey, there's lightning strikes literally right there," and they say, "Well, we're going to shoot through it." What do you do? You have, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, I, I can't, uh, this is a moment of ego, I think, but and it's not directed necessarily, but I can't tell you how many times I've been around uh, a rootin' tootin' sound mixer who they're like, they're rolling the shot, they're getting stuff in the camera, performers are performing and everybody's doing their job and then the mixer's just like just throws his headphones down turns off the things like i don't even know why we're here like, <laughs> because there's a train or something yeah. like that well because and not to be a turd but like obviously it's not all anybody's one thing you right. know sometimes you roll out the performance because that's what the actor needs to do to be able to emote through the whole shot or right. that's the emotional moment that the director's trying to get and maybe the sound isn't going to be awesome but you can adr that later right what are you get trying it, to say get there, it Colin? in the can yeah. <laughs> I, I everybody gets uh everybody gets i think totally full of their own crap sometimes yeah i think is the place um, where you just stop mm. right and with safety i think it's very easy for people to feel like in my scenario like in that scenario where like I'll, I'll tell I'll tell my own horror story here. So we're we have, shooting. We have the campfire movie, lit. and uh, we are in the desert. Like we're in the desert. There's mm -hmm. no cover. It's just desert. It's just dunes, and um, and so uh, like this is a sandworm little attack. Sahara. Yeah, it, we're in Little Sahara. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we're shooting this sequence, and there is there's a storm coming up on the radar. Like I always kind of have my radar at my side, when, yeah. especially when we're shooting outside. And uh, and I see the, the storm rolling in. It's freaking massive. Mm -hmm. 10 miles out, I tell them, hey guys, like we're fully exposed out here. Starting to pout. And this is, and I'm <laughs> starting to pout. Five miles out, I 
stand down on the boom and I'm telling and I tell them the director slash first AD slash producer slash everything like okay like that in and of now it's too close yep. the beginning of a problem yeah. five miles out starting to shout people. we're we're too close but we only have two more setups to get guys mm -hmm. so we get the shots and then the storm rolls over us we have no cover we have gators those big go kart yep. things. And uh, so they, we throw all the equipment in the back of the gators. At this point, it's raining, openly raining on the entire crew. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. There is no cover. There are no tents or anything for us to hide underneath. Then it starts to hail, like dime-sized hail and now nickel-sized hail. And we're fully exposed, and there is lightning striking all around us. Oh, wow. Why were you naked this whole time? And I was, <laughs> I was just balls out naked, <laughs> and I felt... I felt really exposed. <laughs> <laughs> Fully exposed. And uh, so, like, I busted out a tarp. I have a tarp in my kit, so I busted out the tarp and, like, just told everybody to gather underneath this freaking tarp because, like, yeah. we should have gotten the hell out of there, like, at least 30 minutes before we did. Was this a large production or was this a it was local a mi production? It was, it was a local micro production. There in and of itself is trouble. I mean, there's so many jobs that you can take at any given moment that they're not going to have... Uh, ice for the coolers or mm -hmm. they're good when when you get on a job and they're, they're they've got issues with uh, whether or not there's enough water for everyone to yep. drink or there's a bathroom i mean i worked on a show in a totally a, t a department totally unconnected to this situation and hearing about these construction guys who worked for days and days building an interior set for a special effects rigging and it was not special effects fault or problem this was a construction issue they did not have toilet facilities they didn't have water dropped out there they couldn't get away to go have lunch they had to have lunch on the property and stuff like that and i'm like why didn't somebody hey what's wrong with your supervisor yeah not to advocate for you all mm -hmm. Uh, right. because you know, he's not a real guy or uh, then you, what is your issue? Not advocating for yourself, right? Because you don't know what you don't, what you're supposed to be allowed to have. Mm. Like that is full on exploitation. But in the yeah. end it's like, okay, Hey, look, this is unsafe. I'm sweating to death every day. And then I've got a 45 minute drive back to yeah. wherever you're putting us up. Yep. I mean, and yeah, that's the only everybody time I can go to can, the bathroom. Yeah. Just yeah. In the car. Everybody can stop something that is completely unsafe you turn and you look at your comrades on that set and say this does this still feel reasonable to you all yeah and if it doesn't i mean hey no we're done this is this is enough you can shut things down yeah especially on those non-union shows because they can't do it without you right mm -hmm. they might find somebody else they might take some pa and make them the boom op tomorrow because you got fired but what's <laughs> what's the point you know yeah. is the is the material going to be worth well it? and that's one thing that like a after that like it it bothered me it really yeah. bothered yeah. Me. that i just kind of that i didn't that i didn't just like say it, guys I'm we're done part of it i think part of but it was I also because like we're in the middle of the desert i can't go anywhere yeah <laughs> so, like, i i quit and, you, and then you stay to there feel alone Especially on those micro budget things where everybody's, you know, pursuing their dream mm -hmm. and everybody's trying to break in. And you're like the one guy that has 50 credits yeah. that well, you don't need. You don't need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's I mean, that's that's one of the things. I mean, that's camera, G&E and yeah, I think sound are probably the guys who are working all the time, even yeah. on little talking heads commercials. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you don't always necessarily call me to come in and make a set for you or put in topiaries or whatever and uh which is still not something i'm i'm not a greens person uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean i won't bring in yeah plants you handle your stuff, own bush but, okay uh, yeah yeah i mean you can rep i mean that's the beauty of it like right here in my hot little hand is a wine garden rights card it's a very hot hand yeah look at that <laughs> got my fire ring mm. a little cut on my knuckle yeah uh, I mean, how to report a problem at work. If the hazard is an immediate danger, first clear others from the area. I think that's obvious. I mean, if the car just blew up or there's a fire or whatever. Or you're getting hailed I mean, on. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. that's it. Report the hazard to an employer and then report it to the local. Report it to the IATSE hotline. That's right there on there, 844-IA-AWARE. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the front side of it also, if somebody is... I mean, it's it's OSHA for crying OSHA, out loud. OSHA, yeah. yeah. If, if somebody is yeah. threatening 
your uh, employment, you can pretty much whip this thing out and say, like, this is this is the end of it. This is safety. Yeah. We aren't progressing any further than this until this is handled. There are, yeah. like I say, you know, there are two safety courses that everybody needs to take. One of them is just general safety, and the other one is environmental safety, and weather is covered in that. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of... Well, and one of the nice things of, like, whenever I was inducted into the IOTC, and, the, uh, like, man. You've got I, the wine garden right. Yeah, so I, I, I do have the uh, the wine garden. Well, and it's wine garden, W-E-I-N-G-A-R-T-E-N. Not wine, not like beer garden. Right. <laughs> yeah. Beer and wine. But this is a really handy card to have because, the, like, in that scenario, it probably would have been very appropriate for me to bust this thing out and hand it to the director slash yeah. first AD slash producer and all that. All yeah, the that, slashes yeah. are yeah. just a sign of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and on this card it says, in quotes, if this discussion could in any way lead to my being disciplined or terminated or affecting or affect my personal working conditions, I request that my steward or union officer be present at the meeting. Without representation, I choose not to answer any questions. Mm, wow. I mean, chances are in those circumstances on that kind of show, you're not going to have a steward. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean... Well, what's a steward? Um, when you're when you're working on a show of an an appropriate union caliber. One of the uh, one of the union members on the project is going to get selected to be the person who is responsible for maintaining uh, like a list of this is you know okay we're eating at the appropriate time or hey who do we go to if we have questions about this mm. for crew person's rights outside of just you know the show's rights and stuff like that. So I mean I've seen the DIT the digital image transfer person or digital image technician. I uh, handled that. I don't think anybody really is. There really a definition of DIT? No. Nah. Yeah, I guarantee there is one. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I mean, I've seen the key grip and the, the gaffer in particular because you want somebody that's got a particular amount of weight behind what they do. Because if the show is going to try to progress without, you know, some random set dresser, I mean, that's they're not always on set. It's got to be somebody who's there with camera. Yeah. Uh, that because I mean, in the end, it's up to the offset crew to take care of themselves. But you know, I've never considered it. It'd be interesting. Maybe there needs to be an offset person, but it's yeah. all situation specific. Every every place you go, there should be a supervisor, and you need to have a chain of responsibility. Mm. Um, and I think that's that's all part of that. Mm. Mm. So what are some, stories. so I, I, I jumped the gun and, and cut ahead of you as far as horror stories go, but what are some horror stories that you may have? I'm thinking, I mean, like, you know, you've got to just being very careful about fire. I'm trying to think about what, you know, do I have a horror story as far as safety that shut things down? I can't think of one off the top of my head. I. Uh, that must I be nice. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's I mean, so that means good. Yeah, it's, that is good. It's it's one of these things where I know I don't I don't want to I don't know what this is going to sound like. I I've avoided a lot of projects because I knew like well this is just going to be a lot harder than I want to do. When, yeah. when you have a lot of different crew positions where you come to work knowing what you're going to do. You're going to come to work and do makeup, you're going to do makeup. You might do makeup and hair or something like that. It just depends on what you're going to set yourself up for. If you're doing the art department, you're going to come to work on some jobs because this is what you negotiated and you're going to be the one art department person. And it's, that is freaking tough. Yeah. Uh, you know, you come in as a grip, chances are the rest of the grips are going to say, yeah, we're the grips. We'll help out in this way, but we're not going to be called upon to, you know, yeah, we'll take care of our own trash, but we're not collecting trash or whatever. And you mm. get somewhere where it's like the art department, you know, the crew leaves and then the art department comes in and has to reset the place and there's just trash everywhere. Mm. Maybe it's because their, you know, production was incapable of helping or because locations wasn't a big enough department or who knows. But, you know, just like where does where does stuff like that fall into responsibility? Yeah. I, I have avoided a lot of smaller projects where danger was ever present. Um, I mean, I, I heard of I, I've read because I have to read the script ahead of time. Way ahead of time. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to take a project that I know I'm going to be just banging my head against the wall all of the time. And because that's my formula, you know, I can do everything with time, money or people. And I want two of those things. Mm. <laughs> and uh, after that, I know that I'm just like taking years off of my life 
<laughs> you just by, removed by 10 it. years of your life. Precisely. Uh, yeah. I felt that. I've been there and I'm just like, man, this just, that just, I just aged because I did this project. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, yeah, I read a script this year and I saw a bunch of different stuff and said, there's no way I'm doing that. I've done, I did it like three times. I'm like, there's no way I'm working on this because I'm not hearing the right things. It raises too many red flags. And I think that it, the question to me isn't so much about the horror stories, is about how did I avoid the horror stories? Yeah, uh, that, because yeah. that's a that's months, where I'm curious because like, yeah. I think new listeners or like people like me, I'm hearing this is an excellent conversation to start learning what the red flags are, how to identify the red flags, mm -hmm. and and it sounds like you've done a very successful job with that. But yeah, um, months later, yeah. when the show is in production and you're you're oh yeah, how how are they doing on that? They're not having a good time. Mm. <laughs> Hey, yeah. How are they? Oh, yeah, really? What's it's it? Been How's bad. it going with the giant hole in the ground that was? Yeah, I'm going to go very specific here. How's it going with the giant hole in the ground that what people would have to have hand dug because they weren't going to bring in an uh, excavator <laughs> oh. uh, that needed to be filled with blood and like floating horse carcasses and spikes oh, uh, geez. that you're going to put talent into? <laughs> <laughs> like, and then, yeah, I know how much effects blood costs. It's not terrible, but like, how do you blend, blend that up? And then if you don't have enough money for me to do this, that, or the other, uh, just general stuff, and then suddenly you, you want floating horse carcasses and horse heads everywhere. <laughs> it's just, you're, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. So stay tuned for a uh, horse pit coming yeah. in, <laughs> coming, coming to theaters in 2020. Horse pit. Pit. In the end, yeah, no diss to anybody that works on these things because everybody has their motivations. But at the same time, I'm like, no, I know that you're gonna try to pin all that onto my responsibility. Yeah. Because you're you're not hiring enough of people in this department or that department to get these things to happen. Yeah. And uh, who knows? Did they film that? I don't even know. That, did they do it? Did they decide that was too much? Or was it, in the end, it's like, in my department, you can run around dealing with some situation that is agonizing under the best of circumstances, and then you get there, and it's just not a big deal to anybody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't want to do it. So, I yeah. mean, sepsis. <laughs> Avoid sepsis. Yeah. I mean, I'm on, uh, lots Nick, of stuff. Do you have any horror stories? <laughs> no, it, it, ish. I mean, it's just kind of like I wish I had asked those questions on a lot of things. Mm. Or like this is like just kind of very eye-opening. And now I'm at the point where realizing like, hey, what's your position? Well, I'm the first AD, second AD, uh, also locations manager. And being like, oh, this is a huge, huge, huge red mm. flag. Because yeah. I've, yeah. Been, I've been stuck in those slash positions mm -hmm. and it's just kind of a helpless feeling once you're yeah. kind of committed into it and you don't feel like you have that power like especially as a as a pa uh like a lot of times i'd come onto projects and didn't never got sent a script or anything because uh, I, I don't know if PAs usually get scripts or anything like that. And if somebody's you, gonna get it. Or yeah. Somebody's gonna, you know, get it from somebody and yeah. pass it around. And maybe you're only reading it in the middle of week two or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you're realizing, like, oh, this is what we're doing, and this is scripts? what's coming up. Yeah, but it's it's uh, not any real specific horror stories, but just there have been so many times on so many different shoots where. I leave set and then look at my watch and go, oh, cool. I have a 30 minute drive home. Yep. And if I get home and then immediately go to sleep, I will have six hours of sleep before I have to mm. get up and go and, back. And go mm. back. The recurring yeah. unfortunate depiction that we all paint over and over again is, is travel times yep. and where's the location. We film so many things in Guthrie Mm -hmm. I mean, I think everybody that's <laughs> listening to this show probably knows this is an Oklahoma City based show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the crew lives in Blanchard, Tuttle, Newcastle, Norman, Midwest City, uh, Oklahoma that City, huge. Edmond. It's a, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. a 45 minute drive that's just not, it, it's just on top of everything. Like, oh, cool. I have an eight hour turnaround. Well, you know, you add in the 45, 45, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, I don't even officially get. Uh, any kind of sleep on this yeah. Yeah. before yeah. I have well, to get up and travel again. And like the number one killer of crew members, like I, I say this a lot, mm -hmm. is that the number one killer is wrecking on your way home. Yeah. yeah. Is like totaling your car on your way home because you fell asleep at the wheel. Mm -hmm. Statistically, that's the number one killer of film crew. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I, uh, I've definitely 
I've, I've had I've, my scenarios I've, where that's... I've had so many. I I don't. I'm not gonna say I've had like mass multiple close calls, but because you know, for most of my career, I was living in Stillwater. Holla! So I would, uh, yeah, <laughs> I would drive. I would that's drive where I'm from hotel. Twenty. <laughs> 20 minutes in the morning, that's a cup of coffee. You get to set uh, in Guthrie and do the day, and then you drive home, and that wasn't not crushing me, but I also knew I've got to stop and take a nap sometimes, or mm-hmm. I should rest before I go. And so, like I say, one, you know, one of our local UPMs has always been especially good about that. Dude, if you need to stop, if you need to, if you need to rest, you know, let me know. We'll get you hooked up. I'm like, a, a yeah. massive thanks to the, I'm, I've taken them up on it, you know? Yeah. But, uh, that's what I say. I mean, the, the horror stories, I mean, I, it's, yeah, like I say, the horror stories to me is avoiding the actual horror stories and horror stories to me is just being like, you know, here, here's, here's just too much. You didn't know what you were getting into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like just that. too much. Yeah. 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 And that's what, yeah, it sounds like it's easy to get into that without realizing it, but that's yeah. what these, that's what the union's for is oh, yeah. to, to yeah. tell you yeah. that's too much. Yeah, mm-hmm. this, it's, it it's is very too much. Least, when you, like we say, with collective bargaining, in, in addition, is knowing that you have your comrades around you, mm-hmm. and you can all look. You've all got. You're all busy. You've all got your own agendas to take care of, your own things to do for the whole show. You've got a, something that has to happen on every day of every show. But in the end, you should all be looking for one and looking after one another and looking towards the entire crew. Is this person getting enough water? Why is that person over there, uh, you know, not looking so hot? Check in on them. Yeah. You know, you, everybody's, you're, you're responsible for yourself. You're responsible for your immediate department, but you're also, you're, you should all be there for one another. Mm-hmm. And that starts at the beginning when you're trying to figure out whether or not you're all working for the right rate or, you know, you can talk to the other department heads. Hey, you know, I'm over here and I'm, uh, uh, this is what I'm doing. Are you guys getting what you want? Are you guys getting what you deserve? You can you can advocate for yourself and for everybody else by doing that. And it's just energy. It just depends. Yeah. You know. Uh, but yeah. Brian, yeah. you should have had uh, Lainey on. I think she's had she's, had, she's got <laughs> yeah, some horror stories. Mm-hmm. She'll well, that's never why she go near work a in film, film anymore. Yeah, so yeah. she'll never go near a film again. Jeez. Oh yeah, I've had a few different like breaks from film because of this stuff. Mm. Yeah. Like it's yeah. Well. <laughs> Well, Colin, thanks so much for coming on the show. Real quick, where can we find more information about Local 484? I mean, you can always ask me if you see me or if you want to, I mean, find me on Facebook and send me a private message. Uh, if you got my email address, you can phone me up, you can text me, um, especially, you know, if, if you've ever worked with me before, I'm on a crew list and that's in your email and you can you can connect with me in those fa- the, easily that way. Um and you can always go to the IA484 website. And um, I know it's a little, it's a little bit, it, it's one of those things, you, you know, you go in, it's like, okay, hey, there's a main screen and you click all that stuff. And it's like, okay, sign in. Well, I'm not a member. I can't sign into anything because they want to talk to you. You know, they want you to send them an email. The, the union wants you to phone them up and ask somebody in the office because there is a person who has an answer. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know everything, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you I, I know enough, but at the very end, if, if I can't come up with an answer, I'll work towards it because somebody has that answer, and that's that's why it's like that. It's set up to say, hey, this is a website, and here's how you get a hold of us, but yeah. please connect with us. Don't just go scouring the world for mm. something and living under the impression otherwise. Right. So, I mean, yeah, you can, talk to, like I say, you can talk to me, you can uh, probably talk to any of the at-larges uh, if you happen to know who they are, but you're not going to know unless you find out for sure. And you can always, if you want more information, talk to the other union members. But in the end, it's the same thing. There's a lot of partial information, and uh, they're going to say, well, yeah, you should probably talk to this guy. And then I'm going to say, you should probably talk to that person, you know? <laughs> and uh, Because, like, and, yeah, a real, a real answer is always better than yeah. a partial answer, but a partial answer is better than wondering. Mm. Right. So. Yeah. And then you mentioned a hotline that people can call. Do you know it that? The, it was on the oh, court. Yeah. Si- yeah, that's yeah. this is a, that's the safety. You had the wine garden card. I had the safety uh, safety rights. These guys work. over here is just looking at their cards. <laughs> these yeah. aren't get even, off your phones. They, they, <laughs> these aren't even our union cards. These are yeah. these are easily distributable. These are at every uh, membership drive and union events and stuff like that. I mean, there's and they're handy to have. It's it's nice to be able to just like 
hand this to somebody instead of being. It gives you like, power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Ultimate. I'm power. not going to say safety. Safety, you. safety is power. It is. But yeah, if you guys are in a circumstance, if you're on any show, any show, if you feel unsafe, you know, you bring it up because in the end, it's there. It's gonna get. It's got to get noted in the PRs in the in the production reports. It's got to get noted somehow or another. Uh, you know. It, it, you get into a situation and your place gets blown up by a tornado or there's a fire or somebody's doing some ridiculous stunt that there's clearly not enough uh, consideration going into. I mean, you don't know until you've been in the, been there whether or not that's going to work or make any sense. Get with the other department heads and say, does this make sense? Does this meet with appropriate safety guidelines? And, uh, you know, you can stop it. You can say, hey, we need to take, we need to slow down and take a look at approaching this from another perspective because did we talk about this in a production meeting yeah. or didn't we? Yeah. So, yeah. And then they can call that. What was the, yeah. do you have that on there? Oh, yeah. If you've got a, I mean, I, I'm not going to say, I think I mean, safety is everything. So whether or not it's uh, your IA or not, uh, 844-IA-AWARE. That's 844-422-9273. If there's a major problem going down, I... Uh, yeah, phone it up because someone will make a call. It'll it'll click real fast. Yeah, see that's that's great information. It's so good. And thank you guys for everything that you do over at Local Four Eight Four and and you know all your safety classes. Yeah, thank your you for union too. I know. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you for advocating for us you, when we thank don't you do me it. And yeah. You. yeah, thanks. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, Colin Ward, everybody, thanks so much for coming on the show. Colin dude. Thank Ward. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that we know how to be safe. Smart and savvy on set. Cha. Uh, the first thing I kind of wanted to just do, it's all, it's also a warm-up game, but it would be kind of a quick, fun little thing where we're going to name the, uh, you know, movie, a title of a movie. Okay. We're going to cast, the next person's going to cast the movie. Okay. And then the last person's going to get the tagline or the plot of that movie. Ooh. Ooh, and I like it. So we'll start there, and then I thought we could take some of the um, bits that we've discussed in the interview, you know, and it, then maybe play out some movie scenes or something from there. But okay. first, we're just going to give ourselves a few movies to go off of. Nice. Okay. Anyone want to get the title? Anyone can choose if, if you prefer title casting. Oh or man. Plotline. Um. The title is uh, Alaskan Wombat. Ooh. Okay, Kelly, who's casting? Okay, I'm casting Alaskan Wombat. Uh, Alaskan Wombat stars. Um. Uh. Is it what's this younger Olsen? Twins, Elizabeth, oh, Elizabeth Olsen. Olsen, and uh, is she part of the Olsen twins. She's a younger. She's not oh, a she's twin. Younger. She's, she's a. She's so I guess she's one not of the. Yeah, oh, twin. Yeah, I get what oh. you're saying. Yeah. I get what, the Olsen sibling. The Olsen uh, clan. Ah, the Olsen clan. There we she, go. She was born part of it attached. And they were just <laughs> yeah. like, no. Yeah, they just cut <laughs> they her cut off. They cut her off. They're <laughs> like, we don't want you. All right. So starring Elizabeth Olsen and we'll go uh, Macaulay Culkin since we'll just have a bunch Ooh. of the clans. We'll go Culkin yeah. and Olsen. And the movie is about um, Macaulay Culkin is a former uh, war, uh, established war veteran and Elizabeth Olsen uh, has a mission for him, and his code name was Alaskan Wombat. Ooh, I like it. <sighs> Hello, welcome to the Quickie Mart. I'm Macaulay Culkin. What can I get for you? Uh, I brought all my stuff up here. You, I didn't. I didn't so you want all this stuff? Is that what you're trying to tell me? That's usually how this works. I bring up my stuff, and then you scan it without telling me your name. Listen. Don't tell me how to do my job, all right? I'm sorry. You just, you were just doing it very bad. <sighs> all right. That'll be five ninety nine. Oh, okay. Excuse me, Mr. Mr. Culkin? Uh, I'm in line right here. So. I'm sorry. I know. But listen, this man is a, is a war hero. I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah, well, he's not a great uh, Wait, clerk. Colonel, is that you? Excuse me, sir. Karate chop to the neck. <laughs> uh, ow. Colonel. I'm here for you. We need you again. I know it's been so long, and I know you went too deep. Last time, it was too far. But I went I, way too deep. I'm telling you now. We need you, and we can't do this without you. And I will not. I'm, I promise you this, Mr. Culkin. I will not let you get too deep. You know what happened last time I went in too deep? I do. I read your file. Were M and J. 
I read your file and I, I uh, can deeply connect with what you went through, sir. Because I too have been too deep. <laughs> but I need you to go deep with me now. Back into Alaska. <sighs> Ow, my neck. Alaska. God. Sir. Judo sir. Chop. Like. Alaska. What's the assignment? What's going to take me back to Alaska? Jump two. Scene. Macaulay Culkin is jumping out of a plane with his pilot telling him where he's going to land in the Netherlands of Alaska, the deep forests of Alaska. Where are we supposed to go? Uh, I'm not really sure. Oh, he already left. Okay. I guess I'll just keep drinking another beer. (laughs) The plane crashes into the side of a mountain. Macaulay lands. Shoot, gets caught on a tree. He rips it down. Oh, God. Ah, ah. Let me check my surroundings. He All sees right. in the distance a lantern. It is small, tiny, glowing light. Everything else is pitch black, and you hear wolves howling around him. Oh. I've never felt more at home. Oh. Let me just cock my gun. And now it's time to go. Alaskan Wombat. Alaskan Wombat. Come in, Mr. Wombat. This is Alaskan Wombat. Who is this? Colonel, how's it going? Good. I'm glad you landed safely. Have you found the lantern? Did you find your base? I did. It's right in. The, it's right ahead of me. But first, I gotta get past all these wolves. Oh! Kill all the wolves. Skin them alive. Oh! Ow! 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 Take your skin. Put them on. You're going to need it. Ow! This seems excessive. Ow! It was so cold, but now it's so warm. Now that I'm wearing all these wolf furs. Okay. We need you to infiltrate the Moose Headquarters. The Moose Headquarters? Not like actual physical moose, but the evil, villainous Moose Headquarters, led by the Doctor of Tyrannical Destiny, you know, the evil, evil stuff. I could put two and two together. Thank you. I, I, it's code. I'm trying to speak in code, and this doesn't work over the walkies. All right. I see. I, okay. Colonel. Colonel, I see the headquarters dead ahead. Uh... It's, uh, it's a moose head that's carved into the side of the mountain side. That's it. We need you to take out the leader. Do I go in through the left nostril or through the right? You've got your furs on, correct? Affirmative. All right, go in with the dog pack through the doors. Doggy doors, that is. I go in through the doggy doors. Cut to inside uh, the evil lair where we see moose. Hey, uh, how's it going there, Bill? It's pretty good, Dan. Just uh, doing moose stuff around here. Did you, did you uh, notice that man uh, landing in our backyard and uh, murdering all of our dogs? What? Who would do such a thing? We're just two moose who live in a who are in a domestic partnership, living in this humble abode here in the forest. Well, yeah, but some people really don't like moose living together and cohabitating together. Do so. What kind of people are those? I don't know. Oh, is he inside now? Macaulay Culkin <laughs> bursts through the doors, guns a-blazing. Ah. I don't appreciate two moose cohabitating in one habitat. This is a hate crime. Colonel, the moose is dead. Great. I'm sending instructions for your extraction now. Oh, Alaskan, Wamb- well, Alaskan Wombat, how do you feel about playing? Well, the last time I was in a plane, I'm pretty sure the plane went down. All right, well, it's very possible, actually, here, as we extract you, that that could happen again, so... I heard um, the number one killer of people is plane crashes. That's true. I heard that on a podcast. It's it's very accurate. Cut to the plane landing in the street. (laughs) I'm supposed to pick up somebody here. My God, Moose, he's alive! (laughs) 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 Mission accomplished. Alaskan Wombat. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> that was the worst that movie was ever. A terrible movie. It was like <laughs> w- random moose homophobia. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a it takes a real political <laughs> it takes a real political message. That's, it, it was a twist that we weren't expecting at all. Yeah. It turns out Macaulay Culkin is and apparently Elizabeth Olsen is the commander. Is <laughs> <f-ing> yeah. <idiot. laughs> 
You got to break into the Moose headquarters. And like, so Elizabeth Olsen is Elizabeth really Olsen. like the, the She's hater. just an idiot. She's, she's just an uh, idiot. She's the bigot in this she's one. She's the <laughs> bigot. <laughs> idiot. Bigot I need you to Elizabeth come out of Olsen. retirement. <laughs> There's For a hate crime. <laughs> You're the you were the best, Adam. <laughs> no one could hate the best. No one could hate your crime like you oh did. Oh my gosh, right, uh, that's amazing. Right. Well, if you liked what you heard and you'd like to be a part of it yourself, <laughs> then you're weird. You are strange, and but we love you. Yes, go to Patreon.com/slash/OkiShowShow or just visit us at our website OkiShowShow.com where you can see all of our original sketches and much, much more. And that's pretty much it. Stay out of Alaska. And uh, uh, call your union rep. <laughs> call your union rep. And if you're in Australia, uh, keep an eye out for uh, brown cubes. <laughs> and that's it. We'll see you in the next two weeks. Bye. The Oki Show Show is a mostly harmless media podcast recorded at Tower Studios in Oklahoma City. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If you're a business or industry professional that would like to advertise on the podcast, email info at okishowshow.com. Rates starting as low as $25.